In the game dev community, it doesn't seem to be enough to just make a video game. There is an underlying question that almost every game developer has. Should you start a YouTube channel? Let's talk about that. Hey guys, I'm Brandon. My wife Nikki and I make video games and videos about all things game dev. We hope you enjoy the video. So disclaimer off the bat, I'm a YouTuber, obviously, and we upload two videos per week on this channel. So I have some biases, but I'm going to try my very best to try to give you an unbiased breakdown of why you may or may not want to start a YouTube channel. And there are a lot of reasons for both. And which side of the fence you land on is ultimately going to depend on your goals. For us, in Initially, we started this channel just doing devlogs. That was it, we did one video every two weeks and we stuck with that for a while. But as our understanding of YouTube evolved over time, we started to see a different path that was possible. Now, my original goal was to just make a video game and hope that it sold well. And it needed to financially do well enough to support us for a couple of years while I worked on another game. Which again, that becomes a cycle, right? Now you're working on another game that needs to do well enough to support you to create another game. And there is a lot of risk doing it that way. If working on games is your only source of income, then one flop could mean bankruptcy. If you've been subscribed to this channel for a while, then you probably know that we sold our house to fund our game dev studio. So you might reasonably think that we have a very high risk tolerance, but we do not. There was a hundred business and personal decisions that went into us selling our house. But ultimately what we want is what most people want, which is to feel safe, to know that we can survive financially now and in the future. And having a successful YouTube channel can do that for you, and we're gonna talk about how soon. And by the way, I'm not trying to sell you on the idea of trying to start a YouTube channel, I'm just trying to explain why we're doing what we're doing. We wanna be able to pay our bills while being able to work on whatever kind of games that we want to work on without stressing about how successful they are. That's our ultimate goal. So, should you start a YouTube channel? And I'm going to have to give you the annoying answer and say, it depends. It depends on you, it depends on your goals, and it depends on your personal preferences. Having a YouTube channel can help you in your game dev career, 100%. It can also suck away a lot of your time and a lot of the fun out of it if you let it. So let's get into it. There are several paths you can take on YouTube when you're doing a game dev channel. And I'm kind of just gonna run through them and talk about the pros and cons of each along the way. So the three overarching categories that you're going to see are devlog channels, tutorial or education channels, and topic or analysis channels, right? And there are hybrids and subcategories, but Generally speaking, those are the three categories that you're going to see. And a devlog channel might choose to focus on just one project for a really, really long time. The obvious example here being Thin Matrix, right? And I mention him a lot on this channel because I really love his Homegrown series and I really loved his Equilinox series as well. So with that approach where you're working on one project for a really long time, you just work on your game and then occasionally make a video about the progress you've made in the last week or month or whatever, right? Sounds pretty easy. Well, no. <laughs> One of the most annoying things about this approach is now you're not building your game in an order that makes a lot of sense. You now have to build your game in an order that an audience wants to see you build your game in. What does that mean? That means that visuals come first. YouTube is very visual. If there's not something pretty or interesting to look at, then no one wants to watch it. Doesn't matter how complex the code is. The majority of people do not want to see programmer art on the screen. They can't see the vision that you have for your game, where it's going to go. That means that sometimes you're doing things backwards and you're adding all kinds of polish and visuals up front. And that goes against the prototype and then polish philosophy. And that can potentially mean a whole lot of wasted time because now now, if you decide to scrap something, you've put a whole lot of work into the polish and visuals on that. You're also going to get a lot of feedback on your game, more than you probably want. You're going to get dozens of ideas of things that you're going to want to implement but can't, criticism on things that you've just finished implementing and really want to move on from, and just all sorts of other comments. Feedback is obviously a must for game development, but you have to ask yourself if you can handle a constant flood of it all the time, because that can be overwhelming and stressful and sometimes just deflating. Keeping up your confidence is important to remaining very creative. You have to protect that. Other devlog channels like Bargy or Lately Goodguess focus more on tiny projects that can be accomplished in a few days. Generally speaking, these can be more viral and might get you more views, which means more ad revenue and more eyeballs on your channel, which might mean more wish lists for a larger project. But with a channel like this, they're a lot less invested in you. People are there to be entertained, they want in and out very quickly. So with a channel like this, your conversion rate on your wish lists might be a lot lower than on a channel that focuses focuses on one project, even though that might get you less views. 
Next, let's talk about tutorial and education videos. You can go engine agnostic and take a really, really high level approach like the GMTK channel and talk about things that all developers might struggle with, like level design, for example. Or you can really dig down into the nitty gritty stuff and get really specific with engine specific tutorials. We're an example of that. Every Thursday, we upload a Unity tutorial and it's always a how to do X in the Unity game engine. So the wider your topic, the broader the appeal. So more views, more potential revenue from sources like Patreon, but a less defined target audience, which might make it a little more difficult to make revenue off of sources like courses or even sponsorships. Sponsors really love channels with a clearly defined audience where they know exactly who their videos are being targeted to. So when you've got a channel that gets really into the nitty gritty of stuff, you might have fewer views and overall a smaller potential potential audience size, but a more clearly defined target audience, which can make it easier to sell products to. And I know the idea of selling products has a really big ick factor, but we're having a realistic talk about different ways to approach game dev on YouTube. Money and all the potential ways that you can potentially earn money stemming from your YouTube channel is a big thing to consider here. The third category is topic and analysis videos. And Thomas Brush really pops into my head here. He's made videos on just about any topic you can imagine. Lost Relic Games is another one. I was introduced to his channel because of his Kickstarter analysis videos, which I found really interesting. These types of videos don't often have much of a viral appeal, but they can have a broader appeal than a tutorial video, for example. And they can be easier to produce, especially if you're a good communicator. You can just have a few talking points and turn on your camera and go. That's not me, by the way. I have to script out everything. Topic videos also can be a little bit easier to edit, which means less time away from your game. And another pro to these kinds of videos is people will start to feel like they know you. And by extension, they might be much more likely to wishlist your game because they like you. So yes, starting a YouTube channel can really, really help support you financially while you work on your game. Anybody on YouTube will tell you that ad revenue is peanuts. That alone is not enough to pay the bills. You would need millions and millions of views on every single upload to be able to make a living that way. But ad revenue combined with affiliate revenue, membership revenue like from Patreon, sponsorships can be a really big revenue source, revenue from products you create like courses, and potentially revenue from coaching or consulting. These things add up. And having a dedicated audience that likes your stuff, that will watch your stuff and financially support you by paying for memberships and things like that, it's extremely valuable. It's more valuable than just having a large chunk of cash because it's money that keeps coming in. Speaking of which, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you to all of my patrons for supporting us. It means the world to us. I really, really appreciate you guys. But I hope you see my point here. YouTube can be so much more than something that just gives you a couple of wish lists on your game. But just like making a game, it is something that takes a lot longer than you think it's going to become anything viable. And that's the big consideration here that you need to decide, right? Is that time away from your game that you take and then put into your YouTube channel, is that worth it to you? And before you walk away from this video, there's a few things you need to know before you decide to just up and start a YouTube channel. This just comes from my own experience of building this YouTube channel. If you have no experience editing videos, it takes way longer than you think it's going to. Even easier videos to edit will take a lot longer than you think. Editing is a really, really big time suck, and especially devlog videos, for whatever reason, they can take a very long time to produce. There is no formula for going viral. Go into it assuming that one out of every 10 videos is going to do pretty good, and the rest will be your average. A channel that grows consistently is a bit more of a surefire way to start a YouTube channel that's going to financially support you than just starting one and hoping you're going to go viral. No deep deep in your bones with a thousand percent certainty that you will earn exactly zero dollars for at least a year after starting a YouTube channel. This is a long game, just like making video games. Do not plan on being the exception to that rule because you will probably be disappointed. You might think that your first couple of videos are good. They probably won't be, and I'm not trying to be mean. Go back and watch our first video. It was absolutely terrible, and I thought it was good at the time. Last thing I want to say, you might think that you're not funny enough or not cool enough or not smart enough or whatever to be on YouTube, that's not true either. Yes, your delivery will improve over time. That's just naturally what happens. But it doesn't matter what kind of personality you have. It doesn't matter if you have a weird sense of humor. None of that matters. There are people out there that want to hear what you have to say. Anyways, I want to hear from you guys. I'm 
I'm so curious to hear what your thoughts are. Let me know down in the comments because I see this debate everywhere. Should you start a YouTube channel? Do you guys have a YouTube channel? What is your experience with it? What do you think? Let me know down below. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. I want to give a very special thank you to all of our Hall of Fame patrons, Jakob Yandok, Christopher Nichols, Zondra Kessler, Fontaine Waite, Brainwaves to Binary, Couch, KB at Bird Tech Games, and Ian Oral, as well as our Early Access patrons, Ken Waite, Mason Crow, Mr. D, Jan, Liquid Egg, Alexander Prestes, Jude Greaves, Felipe Gomez dos Santos, Ober, Francesco Latamata, Bill Guo, Alon on Mars, Alex Friedman, Danny Rathliff, Arne Nash Schonebeg, Neil, Ben Kerberger, John Wisman, Lucky Tales, Aiden Serve, Hadarsh Kumar, and Merler. If you choose to support us on Patreon, you can get early access to all of our YouTube videos, monthly alpha builds, and more.